Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, your very kind invitation to um, uh, take part in this conference. And it's a real pleasure and honor to contribute this paper as a member of the Cruz family. For my paper today, I've chosen the topic of multifunctionality of ancient scripts, particularly alphabetic scripts, a feature of writing that has long fascinated and puzzled me, and that I believe has remained somewhat unappreciated and indeed neglected in comparative research into ancient writing systems. My reason for talking about this function of ancient writing systems is that I've been pursuing a research uh, project for a number of years that focuses on uh, one particular aspect of the multifunctionality of scripts. <clears throat> I need to emphasize that this paper represents a uh, work in progress, so I'll be very interested in your comments and, and feedback. When we talk about alphabetic writing, we tend to think immediately of its primary function, recording the spoken language phonetically using the letters of the alphabet. This is of course understandable as it was the first and main aim of developing this type of writing. Recording the spoken language in a material form that can be transmitted both spatially and chronologically is the fundamental function of any script, whatever its underlying system. However, we should not forget that writing could be used for other purposes as well. Um, uh, other purposes which over time assumed increasing importance, even if not rivaling its first and foremost function. The alphabetic script was particularly suitable for being used for such other, I'd call secondary purposes. And so in this regard too, the idea of alphabetic writing had important consequences for intellectual developments in the ancient Eastern Mediterranean. What are the secondary functions of ancient writing, particularly of alphabetic scripts uh, that we see in the sources available to us today? A quick count of the secondary functions of the scripts of the ancient Eastern Mediterranean comes to four. However, it is important to bear in mind that not every script demonstrates all four secondary uh, functions. In this paper, I intend to offer a brief survey of these various secondary functions and then to concentrate on one of them, the one that forms the subject of my own research. Let us now uh, look at, at the secondary functions briefly, one by one. The order in which I shall discuss these is to, is to some extent arbitrary and is in no way a reflection of the chronological order in which they arose or of any other such as causal relationship between them. The first such secondary function I'd like to mention is that of using the elements of the alphabet as numerals. This idea may seem alien to us who have been accustomed to using uh, separate characters for numbers for many centuries, but this function of writing was widespread in the ancient Mediterranean world. Two main such systems developed across time and cultures. The first is uh, generally called acrophonic and the second alphabetic. The best known example for such numeral systems is that of ancient Greek in which both the acrophonic and the alphabetic systems were used. The acrophonic system in Greek, which is also called Herodianic, after the grammarian Herodianus who described it, is mainly attested in Attica and was used in the archaic and early classical periods. From the 5th century BC onwards, it was gradually replaced by the alphabetic numeral system, which essentially supplanted it by the time of the Roman period. The acrophonic system consisted of six simple characters for 1, 5, 10, 100, 1000 and 10,000 and four compound signs. As the system's name itself says, the numerals are actually the first letters of their Greek names, except for the unit, which was a straight uh, vertical line. Thus, delta represented uh, 10 from the word deca and chi uh, 1000 for kilion. 
traces of such an acrophonic numeral system can be detected in the Roman numerals, where some of the signs for numerals of probably uh, Etruscan origin evolved to resemble certain letters of the Latin alphabet and were then equated with these letters under the influence of the Latin words for these numerals. Thus, the letter C, capital C, that is, uh, became the sign for 100 under the influence of Cantum, and M, capital M, for uh, 1000 under that of Mille. The other main numeral system that enjoyed widespread popularity in the Greek world and that eventually became the most widely used is the alphabetic system. It essentially means that each letter of the alphabet is given a numerical value in alphabetic order. Thus, alpha equals 1, beta equals 2, and so on, up to 900. The 24 letters of the classical Ionian alphabet were supplemented by three archaic letters, all ultimately derived from the Phoenician alphabet, stigma or digamma uh, with the value of 6, Copa uh, with the value of 90 and Sampi with that of 900. Thus the full system consisted of 27 letters. The alphabetic numeral system had the advantage of being economical, needing a maximum of three characters to represent any number under 1000, whereas the acrophonic system, albeit using fewer characters, needed several more. The alphabetic system became the dominant numeral system in Greek from the late classical period onwards. It was used all over the Greek-speaking world that, thanks to Alexander the Great's conquest, came to include the whole of the Eastern Mediterranean, Egypt, and the Near and Middle East as far as um, Afghanistan and Northwest India. Its use was continued by the Greek-speaking administration of the eastern half of the Roman Empire that came to replace the Hellenistic states in many of these uh, regions. Thus, the rich uh, papyrological sources from Hellenistic Roman and Byzantine Egypt supply plentiful evidence for the widespread use of the alphabetic numeral system for over a thousand years, well into the Arab period. Where did the idea of using the letters of the alphabet for designating numerals come from? Uh, the alphabetic system of numerical notation clearly relies on a fixed order of the letters. This fixed order must be widely known to those able to read, write and count, otherwise the system simply cannot function. As is well known, the Greeks originally borrowed and later adapted the idea of alphabetic writing, as well as most letter forms, letter names, and um, uh, the order of the letters from the Phoenicians. Thus, it is highly likely that the idea of using the letters of the alphabet for numerical notation in Greek also goes back to the same Northwest Semitic practice, it is theoretically possible that the Greeks ad adopted the idea of using the letters of the alphabet for numerical, location, uh, numerical notation at the same time they borrowed the idea of alphabetic writing as part of the same package, uh, so to speak, including the basic idea of alphabetic writing, letter forms and names and their fixed order, as well as the secondary function of the letters as numerals. At the same time, it is also possible that this secondary function is the result of a subsequent borrowing by the Greeks from the Phoenicians, which could be supported by the fact that the alphabetic system of numerical notation seems to appear and uh, becomes dominant in Greek later than the acrophonic system. The long-standing contacts between the Greeks and Phoenicians in the Eastern Mediterranean would easily allow such a secondary borrowing to take place in a later, but probably still pre-classical period. Whenever we hypothesize the uh, transmission to have taken place, it is clearly a testimony to the closeness of cultural contacts between Greece and the Levant, and to the extensive intellectual debt of the ancient Greeks to the Phoenicians in this regard. Needless to say, uh, the non-alphabetic writing systems of the Eastern Mediterranean Basin were less suitable for such a secondary use of their characters. In Egypt, for example, the hieroglyphic, hieratic and demotic writing systems 
um, all of which may be classified as logosyllabic, uh, employed specific characters for writing numbers. However, as soon as the Coptic alphabet is developed in the early Roman period from the Greek alphabet, with the addition of six or seven monoconsonantal demotic signs, employing letters for numerical notation becomes very easy. And this practice is then used widely in Coptic on the model of the Greek system. The same is the case with Syriac, even though there the influence of the Greek alphabet is less obvious and direct than on Coptic. Clearly, the influence of Greek literate culture had become so pervasive in the Eastern Mediterranean by the Roman period that most, if not all, scribes of other languages were familiar with Greek practices as well and adopted these wherever the possibility and need arose. The next secondary function of alphabetic scripts of the ancient Eastern Mediterranean that I'd like to mention and briefly describe here is that of cryptography or cipher, that is a secret, write, uh, secret system of writing that prevents the uninitiated from understanding the text. Again, um, uh, Greek supplies um, an excellent example, an example that had a great deal of influence on a variety of other alphabetic scripts in the ancient Near East. This cipher is often referred to as the alpha, theta, beta, eta uh, system. It is based on the numerical value of the letters of the Greek alphabet assigned to these according to the alphabetic system of numerical notation that I've just uh, described. As we have seen, under this system, the 24 letters of the Greek alphabet plus three archaic signs were each given a numerical value ranging from 1 to 900 that corresponded to their order in the Greek alphabet. The alpha, theta, beta, eta uh, cipher was created by dividing the 24 letters of the Greek alphabet plus the three archaic signs that the alphabetic system of numerical notation included into three groups of nine letters each. And then by assigning to these the letters of each group in the reverse order. Thus, within uh, the first group of alpha to theta, Alpha was paired with theta, beta with eta, hence the name of the cipher, and so on. The interesting thing is that the total of the numerical value of each pair of letters in the first group of nine letters is 10. The total of the numerical value of each pair of letters in the second group of nine letters is 100, while that in the third and final group is 1000. Thus, for a perfect such cipher, one needs 27 letters. It is interesting to note that the central letter of each group, epsilon of the first, nu of the second, and phi of the third, is each paired with itself. In other words, they are left on a substituted in the cipher as the double of the numerical value of each yields the required total. 10 in the case of, of uh, the two epsilons, uh, 100 in the case of the two nus, and 1000 in the case of the two phi's. Thus, um, uh, in this cipher that this code creates, these three letters, that is epsilon, nu, and phi, remain undisguised. Although this system requires and is based on 27 letters, three groups of nine, in actual fact, only 24 letters of the Greek alphabet are used in the code as the archaic letters of stigma or digamma, copa and sampi were not normally used in late classical and later Greek texts. The encoding work by the scribe writing not the letters required, but their corresponding pairs according to the cipher. This method of encoding uh, created a simple so secret uh, writing system that enjoyed a great deal of popularity in antiquity and the Middle Ages. Its earliest attestation is currently found in a visitor's graffito carved into the Memnon Colossus in Western Thebes and dated most probably to the second century AD, although an earlier date is also possible. The cipher remained popular among Byzantine scribes and is attested as late as the 16th century. 
In antiquity, it appears to have been used in graffiti, magical papyri, but even in an ordinary private list of clothes and victuals. Some scholars have recently speculated that the cipher might already have been known to the traveler and versatile intellectual Sextus Julius Africanus, who lived approximately between 160 and 240 AD. In the Byzantine period, it was used by scribes of manuscripts for writing colophones. The popularity of this cipher in Greek is also reflected by the fact that it was adopted by scribes of other languages as well quite early on, <clears throat> in particular Syriac and Coptic. Uh, in both these languages, the cipher was used for well over a millennium. So I won't go into detail of the Coptic and uh, Syriac systems for lack of time. Uh, and so I'll um, uh, jump ahead. Um, the reception by and integration of this uh, Greek cipher into the Coptic and Syriac scribal traditions therefore clearly demonstrates the close contacts between scribes and intellectuals working in different languages and between the scribal traditions in these different cultures that developed over time in the Eastern Mediterranean. The next secondary uh, use of ancient alphabets in the Eastern Mediterranean that I'd like to uh, discuss briefly here actually reverses the process that we have just been discussing. It involves decoding instead of encoding. The pervasive influence of the originally alpha, theta, beta, eta uh, cipher is demonstrated by the fact that it was adopted by Babylonian Jewish religious scholars, most probably from a Syriac scribal practice around the 5th and 6th century AD. Later tradition attributed the cipher to the otherwise unknown Jewish sage, Rabbi Hiya ben Rabbi Hanina, and so it is possible that he was involved in mediating it from Syriac scribal culture to Babylonian rabbinical scholarship. However, in classical Bab Babylonian rabbinical literature, instead of encoding, it was actually used for decoding the, to them, no longer intelligible Greek word manon in Bibli uh, a biblical hapax occurring in a verse of, the, of Proverbs. In order to make sense of this to them obscure word, they borrowed this cipher from East Syrian scholastic culture, where the Syriac adaptation of the Greek cipher to a 22-letter alphabet was widely used. Thus, Babylonian rabbinical scholars used the Aleph, Tet, Bet, Het cipher to uh, decode the word Manon as a witness, and thus to make it intelligible to themselves. By this, they reverse the process. They use the Syriac adaptation of this cipher, original devised in Greek, to decode an unintelligible word rather than encode intelligible writing into a secret text. The use of this cipher, with one major modification by Rabbi Nathan of Rome in the 11th century AD, remained in use in rabbinical literature as an exegetical tool for interpreting the Bible for centuries. Let us now look at the fourth secondary use of the scripts uh, of the ancient uh, Eastern Mediterranean, a use that I'd like to discuss in greater detail here as my own research focuses on it. As in the case of the previously discussed functions of the alphabet, this particular secondary uh, use also depends on the fixed order of the letters, although the letter's actual numerical value is irrelevant to it. This particular function we may call alphabetization, that is arranging textual information in the order of the alphabet. The best documented example of this type of use of the alphabet in the Eastern Mediterranean is found in Greek, particularly in papyrus documents from Egypt. But this method of arranging textual data is also known in the Hebrew Bible, in cuneiform tablets from Beth Shemesh, and Ugarit from the Late Bronze Age onwards. <clears throat> and also we, we could mention other parts of the Near East, such as Northeastern Jordan and uh, Syria. 
uh, uh, there is a well-documented use of this practice from Egypt in both the uh, hieratic and uh, demotic scripts and more distantly in ancient South Arabian, not to mention the later scripts of antiquity influenced by Greek and Greek scribal traditions such as Latin, Coptic and Syriac. In a nutshell, this practice involves arranging words in lists in the order in which their letters appear in the alphabet. It greatly facilitates processing and uh, retrieving information, and this revolutionizes uh, bureaucratic practices. The great utility of this method is demonstrated by the simple fact that millennia after its invention, we still use it today, every day. However, this method is not as simple as it may sound at first hearing, as words obviously consisted of not just one letter. As the evidence in Greek shows us the most clearly and in the greatest detail, um, initially for hundreds of years, scribes used this method in its simplest form, that is alphabetizing according to the first letter of words only. In Greek, it took intellectuals and bureaucrats several centuries to refine this practice and develop the method of full alphabetization. Obviously, this was a gradual process, first the first uh, two letters and then they expanded the system uh, further. Whereas the earliest traces of alphabetization in Greek are probably found in inscriptions from the uh, southeastern Aegean, uh, in the early and uh, mid third century BC, the first fully alphabetized texts start to appear only as late as the Roman imperial period, around the second century AD. Where did this simple but ingenious and cultural and practically hugely impactful method originate from? Its widespread use and some comparatively, comparatively early evidence in Greek could easily mislead us into thinking that it was an internal Greek intellectual in invention. Indeed, the current uh, scholarly consensus among classicists is that the method of alphabetization in Greek was invented by Kalimachos of Cyrene, the famous Hellenistic poet, scholar and librarian of the great library of Alexandria, active in the first half and the middle of the third century BC, for the purpose of accomplishing the monumental task entrusted to him by King Ptolemy Philadelphus of cataloguing the vast holdings of the library. This monumental catalog entitled the Pinakes or with its full title uh, tables of those who have distinguished themselves in every form of culture and of what they wrote consisted of 120 books and its content is reported to have been arranged alphabetically. Whilst the idea of the method of alphabetization having been invented by Kalimachus is not a priori impossible, some theoretical considerations and the multilingual evidence suggest the need for caution. First, the history of writing across ancient civilizations tend to show that it was everyday practical needs uh, that generally spurred on innovation in this field, such as the requirements of accounting and record keeping for economic purposes, rather than intellectual or literary ideas. Further, as we have seen, the Greeks adopted the idea of alphabetic writing, the letters names, their fixed order and many of the basic letter shapes from the Phoenicians. In addition, it is highly likely that the idea of assigning numeric value to the letters of the alphabet was also borrowed from the Levant. The idea of using the fixed order of the letters of the alphabet for arranging words in such a sequence does not lie uh, uh, very far from fixing the letters order or from assigning numerical value to them. Thus, it appears entirely possible that the practice of alphabetization in Greek goes back to the Northwestern Semitic models, the same sources that graved uh, the Greeks uh, alphabetic writing and its basic features and functions. Um, indeed, the documentary evidence that we have, albeit admittedly meager and patchy, does seem to support this conclusion. 
First, we need to remember that a number of alphabetized Greek inscriptions are known from the third century BC. The earliest of these, SGDI 3761, perhaps from the first half of the third century, that seems to be contemporaneous with, in the, uh, or in the case of this particular inscription, perhaps even predating Kalimachus's work in the Great Library of Alexandria. We should not fail to notice that the earliest of these inscriptions all come from the southeastern Aegean region, more specifically from Phoenix in the Rhodian Peraia and from Kos, a region that lay on the main sea artery uh, between Greece and the Levant, and that was thus ideally placed to receive and mediate Eastern cultural influences. In addition to the uh, Greek epigraphic evidence from the southeastern Aegean and later from Boeotia, we also have Greek papyrological sources um, uh, from Egypt that prove that the alphabetization, um, uh, um, the method of alphabetization had become an established practice in the Greek administration of Egypt by the first half of the second century BC. P. Vindobona G. Um, 6514516, an extensive Greek list of names, patronymics and figures from the first half or the middle of the second century BC, I'm uh, currently actively working on this text, shows that the scribe was familiar with the method of alphabetically arranging textual information according to the first letter of the words. Even earlier, in the early 2nd century BC, a shorter Greek document, an account of payments, also shows this same method at work. Our evidence for alphabetization in Greek papyri increases in the penultimate decade of the 2nd century BC, when a number of further uh, such documents appear. But even if we accepted the, currently, uh, the current scholarly consensus that alphabetization in Greek was invented by Kalimachus in Alexandria, or that it emerged in the southeastern Aegean as the epigraphic sources seem to suggest, we cannot deny the fact that the evidence for alphabetization in some other cultures of the Eastern Mediterranean and the Near East, uh, that by the third century were in close or at least increasing contact with Greece, Egypt, the Levant and South Arabia, is earlier than the Greek evidence. Egypt in particular seems to have played an important, perhaps even key role in the emergence and early development as well as the transmission of this method, although it cannot, of course, be ruled out that we are uh, merely being misled by the abundance of evidence from Egypt and its uh, comparative paucity from elsewhere. Until recently, the earliest safely dated uh, evidence in Egyptian was from the early 4th century BC, um, uh, the, the bottom text. Um, 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 from the early 4th century BC, which as we have just seen, is approximately a century earlier than the earliest Greek sources from the middle or perhaps from the first half of the 3rd century. Demotic Papyrus Carlsberg 425 contains an alphabetically arranged list of personal names, which is exactly the same function as that of uh, the hitherto earliest Greek examples of alphabetization. A number of other, albeit quite fragmentary, alphabetized Egyptian texts are known from subsequent centuries of the Greco-Roman period until Coptic replaces the traditional scripts of Egypt. The most surprising feature of these alphabetized Egyptian texts is that, as Joachim Quack demonstrated, the order of the alphabet they follow is that of ancient South Arabian or South Semitic, more specifically, uh, the Minaean alphabet. O um, and this order is uh, also called the Halacham, from the order of its first letters. At first sight, this would mean that at a late stage in their history, the ancient Egyptians would have adopted a foreign, <coughs> ancient South Semitic or South Arabian cultural invention from a distant and relatively small and isolated civilization. Whilst, whilst this is not a priori impossible, it is certainly unexpected and surprising. 
It is therefore highly tempting to assume that the sequence of transmission of this cultural invention was not from the Minaeans to Egypt, but that both cultures actually borrowed it from a common source. Indeed, the Halaham sequence is attested in the Ugarit archives that are dated between the late 14th to the early 12th century, and also in cuneiform tablets from Beth Shemesh near Jerusalem. As is well known, during exactly this period, called in Egyptian chronology the late 18th, uh, 19th and early 20th dynasties of the New Kingdom, the Levant, uh, particularly its south, lay firmly within the Egyptian sphere of influence, which greatly facilitated the exchange of ideas and goods. Thus, it seems to me possible to assume that rather than borrowing the idea of alphabetization from a distant and relatively small and internationally uninfluential civilization at a very late stage in their cultural development going back millennia, the Egyptians adopted the idea of alphabetic arrangement from the Semitic civilizations of the Levant that had been using it from the late Bronze Age onwards. The same source that the South Arabian Minians adopted it from. The lack of any Egyptian sources for, alphabetiz uh, for alphabetization earlier than the beginning of the 4th century BC, however, seemed to undermine this theory. This was, um, however, uh, changed by the sensational discovery and publication in 2015 of a new hieratic ostracon found in the course of the excavations of uh, Theban tomb 99 of Senefri by the Cambridge Theban tombs project. The tomb has been dated to the mid or late 15th century BC as its owner Senefri lived under Tutmosis III, who conquered the largest foreign empire for Egypt of any pharaoh stretching from as far north as northern Syria to as far south as the fourth cataract of the Nile. The ostracon, a small piece of flat limestone, carries seven lines of hieratic writing on its obverse and six on its reverse. The text is dated paleographically to not later than the late 18th and or early 19th dynasty, that is the late 14th or uh, early 13th century BC by its editor Ben Herring. Thus, the ostracon appears uh, to be earlier or at least contemporaneous with the earliest parts of the Ugarit archives that, together with the cuneiform tablets from Beth Shemesh, represent the earliest surviving evidence for the Halaham uh, sequence. If the editor's interpretation of this text is correct, and there appear to be good reasons for accepting it, in this remarkable ostracum from Thebes in Upper Egypt, we have the hitherto earliest Egyptian evidence for the use of alphabetization. This fact is highly noteworthy, not just in itself, but also because this leads to two important conclusions. First, that the identity of the um, uh, alphabetic sequence uh, found in late period Egyptian demotic and hieratic texts and of that in South Arabian uh, sources is not necessarily due to the Egyptians borrowing directly from the Minoans, and even more importantly, that the idea of alphabetization may have arrived uh, uh, in Egypt not from the various Semitic cultures of the Near East, either the Levant or South Arabia, but on the contrary, it may in fact have been invented in Egypt and exported to Semitic civilizations to the northeast and to the southeast of Egypt. This ostracon also shows that the method of alphabetization had been known and used in Egypt for approximately a millennium before the arrival of Alexander the Great, the foundation of the Great Library of Alexandria and the activities of Callimachus, whom classical scholars have hitherto credited with the invention of this principle in Greek. Our Egyptian and Semitic evidence shows that native Egyptians and the numerous Near Eastern uh, immigrants to Egypt had been familiar with this method and had widely used it well before the arrival of the Greeks. Thus, although we currently still lack evidence for direct borrowing, 
the weight of the evidence increasingly suggests that alphabetization in Greek was not invented, but merely adopted and adapted by the Greeks to their own particular linguistic, scribal and cultural needs from a Near Eastern civilization, Egypt or, or the Northwest Semitic cultures of the Levant. Finally, Returning to the original questions of this paper, we may now claim in summary that the long history and the widespread use of alphabetization in Greek, Egyptian and Semitic languages demonstrate clearly the great utility and importance of the secondary functions of writing in numerous cultures of the ancient East Mediterranean and the Near East. Thank you very much and many apologies for overrunning. Thank you very much. Fascinating paper, thank you. Um, do we have any questions? We've got five minutes for questions.